Yo, welcome to another episode of Quora Q&A. Today's uh, questions are all coming from Quora users. We're going to post them as answers to each Quora question. We'll be talking about the I-130 visa, the H-2B visa, how much it costs. We'll be talking about whether or not you can start uh, and sell a company, buy a company if you're under age 18. And we'll be talking about if you're considering playing college basketball, what you should be thinking about in terms of studying while being an athlete. That sounds interesting. Stick around. Welcome to Bull City Lawyer TV. On this channel, we try to provide immigrants with reliable information to help them make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes. If you like that, then consider subscribing. If you'd like your question answered in a future episode, leave a comment. My name is Trent Williams, and I'll be taking two questions today. And my name is Damian DeNoble, and I'll also be taking two questions today. Trent, would you like to start with a question? Sure. Our first question comes to us from Manish Manikandan. How much does it cost to apply for an H-2B visa? This is a great question because it actually touches on two things. One is, how much does it cost the person that's actually going to hold the H-2B visa to apply? And the other part of this question is, how much would it cost an employer, an employer, excuse me, to apply for an H-2B visa? So I will start off by addressing the employer. Uh, for an employer, there are several costs associated with this that are just application costs. You may be paying it to USCIS, FedEx, etc. Some of these costs include uh, $1,835 expedited fee cost for your I-129. That is paid to USCIS, and it is pretty standard in any application. You do want to get expedited because if you don't get expedited you may be waiting on an answer for a very long time you're gonna to have to send that in fedex ups priority overnight you're looking at anywhere from probably 50 to 250 dollars shipping costs and of course that's not counting the costs of having to actually post a job order having to you know possibly get legal help of going through the process job orders cost 500 to 1,000 kind of on average, depending Depen on how long it has to be. You're placing that in a newspaper and they, they can be pretty pricey depending on your location. Uh, the second part of your question I'm going to answer, which is what would it cost an H-2B visa applicant? And the answer is the visa applicant is going to be responsible for paying some of the consulate processing fees, immigration visa processing fees, when they're actually going in uh, for an interview, right? At this point, they've already received a job offer that they have in hand from the employer. But, and this is critical, that money should be reimbursed by the employer once the H-2B visa applicant arrives to the state. That's by law, it should be reimbursed. The applicant might also be pressured by some sort of vague recruiter to pay them a part of whatever salary they receive for the employer. You should never pay that because that's illegal. And if you see that happening, you should report it. Really, the H-2B visa program is designed with kind of two competing goals in mind. One is to provide U.S. employers with a steady workforce, but the other is to make sure that the employees that are coming from outside the United States aren't mistreated. Right, so as Dami mentioned, the visa application fee and travel, I believe, is something the employer will have to pay. So if you're an employer asking that question, just know the costs add up pretty quickly. So what's our next question? I think, I hope that answered your question, Manish, and we will now go on to the next question. So this one is asked by Roman Federuk. Hi, Roman. Legally speaking, if I'm under the age of 18, but I have enough money to buy a business, can I buy it and have full ownership of it all under my name? So it's kind of a tricky question. Most people won't enter contracts to sell a business with a minor because minor contracts are voidable by the minor. So you could essentially enter the contract, exit the contract at will if you're a minor. So if you're finding someone who's willing to sell you a business, odds are that deal's a little shady from the start. Yeah, so that's just something to, to watch out for. So I guess I'd be interested with this question to know why you're asking it and just get a little more background. So my natural inclination is to think that maybe you have the money and you might want to start a business, which is totally different. While most states won't let you start a corporation, you could probably start an LLC, depending on what state you're in. You would need to talk to an attorney and figure out if your state specifically bars that or maybe the laws don't speak to it and you'd be okay. And then the final thing I'll add is that there are some really good like online companies now that help take care of the entire uh, LLC product for you and we'll link to those in the description. So I hope that's helpful, Roman. 
Now we're gonna go to our third question, and unfortunately it was presented by an anonymous questioner. Hi, anonymous. So, has anyone had luck expediting an I-130 visa after presenting USCIS with a job offer and start date? This is a very common question. There are lots of variants of it, as you might imagine. Almost all cases, the answer is no. There are very few things that any application in the immigration process will be expedited for. The most kind of common category that you'll see is that military applications can get expedited. I think the relevant thing that you might wanna know is, well, how do you do that? How do you get something expedited? There's no box that you tick off on an application. There's no really way to do it online. What you do is you contact your congressional representative. Usually they have somebody in their office, a staffer, who is dedicated to dealing with immigration matters. That might not be true in all states. It's true in the South where we have a lot of constituents who are immigrants or have immigrant families. It might not be as true, for example, in a place like, uh, but what you do is you find your congressperson, go online, research their office phone numbers. Sometimes they'll have one office, many times they'll have several. What you wanna do and call is call and say, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. I am the constituent of congressperson, blah, blah, blah. I am wondering if there's somebody that deals with immigration matters, I have an application I'd like to expedite. And what they'll usually do is give you a phone number or an email. If they decide to help you, they'll send you a sheet, which will be a sort of disclaimer where you have to put you know, what the matter is and that you allow them to ask either a consulate or the USCIS on your behalf to expedite your application. But in your case with the job offer, sadly, I, uh, you know, anonymous, I'd say that you probably don't have much hope. Stay strong. If your application was good, you'll get through it pretty quickly. And our final question comes from Brian Summers. This one's a little bit outside of the legal ballpark. I am considering playing college basketball, says Brian, but it is hard for me to focus and get schoolwork done. Is it worth the experience or should I just focus on my academics? Should I take this one? Yeah, I think, should. yeah. Uh. Hey, Brian. I did play college basketball. played at Swanee. Um, it's a small school. It was a great experience. And I would always sing the praises of playing a collegiate sport. However, grades are number one. You have to make the grades to play. You have to make the grades to graduate. So, if you're really struggling with grades, you may not even be eligible. So, make sure you get your grades up. However, playing a college sport, I would say, is invaluable for anybody. It teaches you time commitment, dedication, discipline. And if you're anything like me, it forced me to work harder in the classroom because I had less time to get distracted. You know what I will say about Trent, just having worked with him, he is incredible at focusing on a task and just getting it done. And I've worked with other athletes, and I'd say that that's, that's a trait that, that a lot of athletes with kind of elite academic credentials share. And one thing I've noticed is when you go into the job market, you tend to work well with others. You've been working on a team your entire life if you play college basketball, and that's something that really carries over, and I think employers notice that. Brian, is that helpful? We hope so, and good luck with your studies and your pursuit of college basketball. Uh, and for everybody else, those are our four questions for today. If you'd like us to answer your question, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can just tag us on Quora, our uh, sort of uh, you know, usernames are here at the bottom, or you can just comment uh, in the comments of this YouTube video. If you're watching on Facebook, just comment on the Facebook video. If you found today's video helpful, or maybe you just enjoy listening to our voices, please consider subscribing to our channel. If the H2B topic was particularly interesting, check out our entire H2B series. Right up there, okay? It's full of great information addressing costs and the entire application process. Until next time, we're the channel that gives reliable information to immigrants to help them avoid costly mistakes and make better decisions.